Hello, I'm Rick Ludwig. My call sign's Wiggs. I was a naval aviator for over 28 years. During that time, I logged over 7,500 hours and close to 1,200 carrier landings. I also was fortunate enough to fly the F-14 Tomcat, in which I logged over 2,000 hours. In its design, the F-14 was to be a multi-role aircraft, both an air superiority fighter and an air-to-ground platform. Now, early in its operational career, the Tomcat emerged as the top cat in the Air Combat Maneuvering Arena, or ACM, what we classically referred to as close-in dogfighting. It was a unique aircraft. It blended an AUG-9 fire control system, or its radar, with an AIM-54 Phoenix missile system. That made it the Navy's first choice for long-range fleet air defense. But technology changes, as does a threat. And ROE, or rules of engagement, don't always let you play to your strengths. In 1977 and 78, two back-to-back -back joint service test and evaluation programs named ACEVAL aim -Eval, were conducted at Nellis Air Force Base with participation by both the Navy and the Air Force. The acronyms stand for Air Combat Evaluation and Air Missile Evaluation. The program looked at evolving fighter tactics with all-aspect missiles, with emphasis on the all-aspect heat-seeking Sidewinder missile. In Ace Aval, Aim Aval, the tactical rules of engagement required that a positive visual identification, or PID, be made of unknown context before they were engaged. The restrictive ROE and the limitations of the then-current radar-guided AIM-7 Sparrow missile demonstrated the need to reevaluate current tactics and new missile requirements. In this series of short videos, we'll take a look at Ace Aval, Aim Aval, and what Navy pilots had to say then, what they have to say now, and what Northrop Grumman engineers are developing today to give our air crews a winning technical advantage. After two years of joint military and DOD planning, an evaluation of new short-range air intercept missile concepts, including the all-aspect IR missile and air combat maneuvering tactics, was conducted at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. Navy F-14 Tomcats and Air Force F-15 Eagles took part in the exercise against a common adversary, the F-5E. The tests, known by the acronym ACE-VAL-AIM-VAL, are complete now. And while there are varied conclusions to be drawn with regard to their primary goals, a funny thing happened to the F-14 on its way through the trials. Designed at another time for another mission, the swing-wing, long-range interceptor more than held its own in the close-in 30-mile air combat arena at Nellis, excelled in several key performance areas, and in terms of operational readiness, proved to be a very maintainable aircraft. Tactically, the word is out. The best way for fighter aircraft to deal with a lethal all-aspect missile is its standoff distances, long-range identification, and long-range kill with launch and leave missiles. That's what it's going to take to be prepared for the future. Because the new infrared missiles can be fired head-on, or even at an angle to the target, maneuvering is less important. And getting behind the other guy is no longer an essential ingredient for successful air combat. It's a situation that, for the first time, will radically change the course of aerial tactics. We have always approached the killing of another aircraft in the same way. Uh, we've had to identify it visually, and then we had to maneuver with it, and finally, uh, in about 95% of the cases, you end up uh, in, a, in a 15 or 20 degree cone behind the guy, firing whatever kind of a weapons uh, that you have at him from the rear. Now, the new all-aspect missile gives you the capability to fire at somebody head on. And that's very, very important because it extends the, uh, the weapon system effectiveness area. It sets up a requirement for you to identify early and to fire early. What you've got to do now is quit thinking about 1,100 feet uh, and a gun kill or an AIM-9 kill and start th thinking in terms of getting a kill at 50 miles, something that's certainly outside of his weapon system capability. Rules of engagement were very constraining back in the early 80s and actually into the 80s, through the 80s, because you visually had to identify the threat. I mean, you had some great sensors on the airplane that you could see coming in from a long distance. You knew they were coming. You didn't know who was coming, but then again, 
you know, it got too close in, you had to move your eyeballs outside the cockpit, at least the pilot did, to look for the guy, the threat. The, the backseat of the Rio kept calling him because he was looking on the radar or whatever sensor was available, the TCS system, the TVSU it was called in the olden days. But again, it was very constrained because you, all the technology brought you to big eyeballs out of the cockpit, close in, ID the guy, and now you're in a dogfight scenario. I should point out again that even though the Tomcat was designed as a multi-role aircraft, its main role was for long-range fleet air defense. But due to its unique swing-wing design, excellent aerodynamics, and strong propulsion, it became a very strong close-in dogfighter. In the next chapter, we will give you a closer and more detailed look at Ace of Al, Aim of Al, including the rules of engagement, tactical solutions, and mission details. That's about five miles looking back to the south. Oh, yeah, I got him on TV. I'm still looking on radar.